Hello everyone, hi and welcome back to my Monday Mindfulness playlist. It has been a long time since I have updated on this playlist and, and done a Monday Mindfulness video, but this topic is one that I've really had it in my mind to come back to, to do an update on, as it's a subject that I probably received the most um, messages about, comments about, it seems that Globus sensation is something that there are a lot of us struggling with and so I wanted to do an updated video. It's been, I think it's almost been a year now since I did the last one. If you haven't seen it, I will link it up here or in the description box so you can watch it if you wish. Um, I don't know how helpful, to be honest, it actually was, um, although I really appreciated the comments from anyone who had watched it and found it helpful or just um, empathised because they were going through something similar. So. The subject of today's video is basically Globus sensation, my experience with it, how I have managed it and how I have moved away from the, the cycle I was in of anxiety and stress and stomach issues and the turmoil that kind of left me with this, that kind of left me in this loop of not being able to get rid of the Globus sensation. So. I really want this video to provide some hope and comfort to anyone that is going through this, that is struggling with this. The main thing that I had to start telling myself was this will get better, I will not have this forever and I will be able to find relief from this. So I really want that to be the, the main like takeaway from this video. If you are struggling with this, it will get better you can find relief from it and you will not have this every single day a battle. So that is the main thing I want people to feel comfort with, that there are ways that we can aid this. I thought I would just start off describing what Globus sensation feels like for me, so that if you are going through this, that you can compare, hopefully find some um, reassurance in that it is something that you know other people struggle with. You're definitely not alone with this. So for me, it very much feels like there is something stuck in my throat. It feels like, at, at its worst, it feels like a ball, like a golf ball or something that is like pressing against my throat. And what I've noticed is that it can be a, a variation of starting just like there's something, a kind of little lump or a bump and then at its worst, it really feels like something pressing like all around my throat and it is like a ball, like a golf ball or even like a tennis ball. It feels like it's stuck there. It's a feeling that really can make you very anxious in itself. It feels like your throat is kind of closing. It feels like your throat is swollen. It feels like there's something there that is restricting you slightly. So I think this is the difficult thing about this feeling is that it is brought on by anxiety and stress, but it then induces further anxiety and stress. So it's hard to then break away from it because it's a natural response to feel quite like worried about what is this feeling. Um, so that that is my experience of it. And I want to be clear with the title of this video, I wanted I wanted people to know that there there is a way of curing this but also it might come down to more of a management rather than a one one cure-all type of thing. I don't believe that there is a product or a supplement or a mineral or a vitamin or something that is just going to take it away. So from my understanding that the globus sensation, when you google it, it says it can be caused by stress and anxiety or acid reflux. I believe it is potentially a combination but Certainly in my circumstance, it seems to be more triggered by stress and anxiety. And the cycle that I found myself in was one of really a paranoia and obsessive worry about stomach acid, acid reflux, heartburn. I developed almost a, a phobic-like response to these symptoms and I, I, I can't really explain why it happened. Um, it was about a year, a year ago and I, for the first time I think in my life, I was experiencing some really mild symptoms of acid reflux where I had this unpleasant taste in the back of my throat, which I believe was acid reflux. Um, of course I googled it and I wasn't really finding much relief from it. I mean the symptoms were so mild at this point, but I did end up going to the doctor and they prescribed a Omeprazole 
Um, but I have been continually Googling about what to do about it and there's so much information on YouTube, other websites that debate stomach acid and whether it's too much, too much acid, too little acid, etc, etc. If you have been doing that, if you've been Googling, researching, please, please stop. That's the one, probably the best thing I did was stop Googling it because I ended up trying everything and anything. I was ordering stuff from Amazon. I was buying like apple cider vinegar. I was trying some calfee, calcium sulfate thing, like because I was determined to get a cure for this issue. But all while I was creating this turmoil in my body, which was then giving me these symptoms. So, you know, I ended up getting referred to um, a gastroenterologist and I asked him like, how connected is the stomach? with anxiety and stress. And he just went, very, it's very connected. He was so intelligent and just matter of fact about it. And he was like, I think what's happened here is if you've had some mild stomach issues, you've got very worked up about it. It's created this cycle and you're unable to break this cycle. So whilst he wasn't really able to give me anything that was gonna take it away, I then had to look at, okay, how are my thoughts going with this? How am I, I'm gonna to have to change my thinking pattern because I'm stuck. And and. I feel like the way I'm talking about it now maybe seems like this was just a slight worry. It was getting to the point it were it was debilitating. I was that worried about this acid reflux issue. And what was so frustrating was that I knew really the symptoms were mild, but I had I had created this monster really where I was just absolutely paranoid. It consumed my thoughts. I would, I would have chest pains, I'd have chest pain here. I had the globus sensation, my stomach would be sore all the time and I could hardly eat because I was just so, I was up to high dough. <laughs> and I really had to assess that entire mindset and start un unpicking it really. So with the help of a therapist, she helped me recognize that Actually, this had gone beyond just a sort of general anxiety. I didn't realize this, that this was actually a form of OCD that I developed where the worry was obsessive and I was symptom checking. I was looking at my tongue all the time to check what color it was. You know, it was, it was another level. So with that, I then started understanding a little bit more about OCD. I, I'm aware I'm going slightly off on a tangent. This is my story, which might not be um, relevant to yourself um, but I guess we're, I'm just trying to give context to how worried and obsessed I was about this but I will continue on to the, the globus sensation in itself and what I basically did to resolve it. So I would say a really good place to start is to look at your day-to-day -day experience with the globus sensation and try and note down even mentally when are you having the globus sensation and when is it at its worst? When it, it, is it at its best or when is it not there? And you might be thinking, I have it all the time. It's there all the time. And I'll come to that in a wee second. But say for me, I would wake up and it wouldn't be there immediately. So, and I knew during the night I was sleeping without too much disruption. So I was able to sleep and I it's not as if I was sleeping and it felt like there was something really pressing on my throat. So I started to think, okay, so when I'm when I'm not awake, it's not there. So for me that was a huge sign. Okay. So if this was something in my body that was causing a physical you know, physically causing this reaction, it would be there all the time. But when my mind was resting and calmer it wasn't there so that is the first thing that I'd like you to maybe have a look at um is it there during the night when you are when you are asleep because I think if it's not that gives you a really clear indication and what I would find is when I would wake up in the morning and then my brain would start to sort of awaken and little the neural pathways would start lighting up and I'd be like oh my god acid reflux blah 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 then yeah, I would start to feel it come on. And it's weird, I could actually feel it almost like growing in my throat, this sort of like swelling, growing. And it felt like, yeah, it would start small and then it would slowly feel as if it was kind of closing over and it was applying pressure. It is the most horrible symptom. If, if you are struggling with this, I, you know, I, it is very, it is very, 
scary to feel it. It's not unco it's not comfortable at all. Whilst it's not painful, it's it really is very uncomfortable. So please don't be too hard on yourself. If you're struggling with this, be really gentle with yourself because it, it can make you just feel so panicked anyway. So be really gentle with yourself um, when you're talking to yourself in your mind. You know, that's something that you want to consider is how are you talking to yourself? But back to the point, first thing to do is when are you experiencing it a lot and when not so much? So when you're asleep maybe. If when, when I said before, if you're experiencing it and you feel like you're having it all the time, then you need to maybe try and do some things to see, test, does it go away at any point? So <clears throat> a bit of a silly one, but try singing. Does it go away when you're singing? So I sometimes, if I feel it in the car and I'm driving, I just start singing, I put on a song and I mean, I don't really know the total psychology behind it, but I know my mind is starts starting to get a little bit distracted because I'm focusing on singing. I start to feel a little bit more joyful. Maybe it's like serotonin and it eases the stress a little bit. So singing, that's a very simple thing you can just quickly try. Actually having a hot drink can sometimes help. It just, I don't know why, maybe when you're eating as well. This is obviously, I am not a medical professional. I really don't know exactly what causes it, but it seems to be if you are drinking or eating or doing something like that, it, it does ease off. Another thing is, say, if you're having a chat with a friend, um, maybe a phone call, is it still there the entire time? And or really, if someone is talking to you, really try and listen to what they're saying, focus in on their chat. And just start to make notes of any points where you feel like it re reduced or, or went away. Because what I found was if I was distracted, if I was busy, if I was, my mind was on something else, it either wasn't there or it was there much less. So once you have identified when the feeling has dissipated, that's the sort of thing you want to do and try and add more of that into your daily routine so that you can start to have relief from the feeling more frequently throughout your day, throughout your week. And then you can start to maybe have the, the scales balance back in your favor where you can just get a stronger mindset on it and say, I am having relief from this. I'm not gonna have this every day or every hour or all the time. I will have relief from this. And once you can just tip that and get a stronger mindset on it, it becomes easier and you can just talk yourself back down from a level of, of feeling like threat. And this is something a therapist helped me with. <clears throat> she explained to me that human beings are the only animal on planet Earth that can think themselves into threat. So what she meant by that was in the wild, you know, like maybe you have a gazelle or something and then it notices prey, maybe a lion or a tiger. I mean, I don't know if these are the right animals, but you know, something threatening. It is going to trigger the flight or fright res response. It's the body will start reacting in a way I guess as a, a as a preservation thing, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not the best at this sort of thing. So that would then trigger the fight or flight mode, which would, would have the adrenaline going around the body and the animal is then going to try and work out survival. How is it going to survive this? So that's obviously a real example of threat. So what I'm trying to explain here is that that Giselle or other animal, they can't just be, you know, sat somewhere and start thinking that. And, and trigger those feelings without the actual threat being there. Whereas human beings, I could sit here and just be sat with my thoughts for an hour and slowly build myself up into threat. I could bring on threat in my body because my mind has gone to that place. And there's lots of things that I've read before where the brain can't tell the difference between, say you relive a memory of something traumatic. The brain, when you relive that memory, the brain actually can't always tell or can't tell whether it's happening right now or whether it's a memory, it can trigger the same response. So what we need to learn to do is if our mind is going to threat, we need to self-soothe and bring it back down. So this is the type of thing that I've worked with the, the therapist to not let my thoughts go 
down that road. And the hard thing is about neural pathways is that if you think of it a little bit like fresh snow, so say you have fresh snow over this side and no one's walked on it, um, you are making new paths. And then over here, you have a path that's been walked a hundred times. You can clearly see the road. It is much easier to go down this path. And that's the same with our thought patterns. When we have a thought, our response, it's easier for the brain to signal, oh, we've been here before, we're gonna go down there. So for me, if I was having the globus sensation, I might think, oh my God, it's happening again. I'm never gonna have relief from this. I will have this forever. I will always have this every day of my life. I'll have this. And that would be the pathway, which I've gone down a hundred times. So it's easy for the brain to just send me down that path. What we want to try and do is move over this way. And so it helps me to think of it metaphorically and actually visualize me stomping through the snow and saying, I will not have this forever. I will find relief. I will feel free from this feeling. And that's, that is where you want to go. And it's not to say that you will never experience it again. And that's why I was unsure how to title this video because I don't, if this is something that you struggle with, um, there isn't, I don't believe, one thing that you could take that would cure it, but I think you can work to really managing it and have the effects be minimal. So just to recap a little bit at the minute, my tips on this subject would be try and identify when you don't experience the globus sensation as much, and I think try some different things that might help give you relief. So singing, going for a run, doing some exercise, maybe go for a swim, chat to a friend, take your mind off the subject and see if that makes a difference. And then the second thing would be to try and create new thought patterns by talking gently to yourself, self-soothe, don't be hard and critical on yourself, use soft language, you know, think about it, how would you say it was your friend or your sister, your brother, your a close family relative, how, if they said to you, I'm really struggling, I've got this horrible feeling in my throat, I feel like it's there every day, would you say to them, you'll have that forever, you will have that every day, every minute, you're gonna feel that, and um, yeah, that's you. <laughs> because the therapist essentially had me talk through that with myself. And, you know, you would never say that to someone you cared about that you loved. You wouldn't say that to anyone. You would never say, oh yeah, that's you. You would say, oh gosh, that sounds horrible. Oh, like, is there anything I can do to help? I'm sure it's something that will ease off. Just, you know, try and relax, do different things for you. You know, you would be really comforting. And that is the voice that you need to start giving to yourself. If you are finding that sometimes the feeling is just unbearable and it's so uncomfortable and you're, you know, you're getting really, really uptight about it, you can do like a little massage, like very gently, just kind of in this area. And that can provide a little bit of relief. Just if, if you're really, you're struggling with it. I would sometimes just gently do this and it does provide a little bit of relief, not maybe for a long time, but it can just help ease it off a bit. It's funny because when I first was experiencing this, I had never had a globus sensation before and I'd never, I didn't even know what acid reflux was to be honest. So I definitely just, I can't really explain it. I, I'm wondering within myself, is it similar to, I'm gonna to struggle to pronounce this word, um, but when, when people have a, a phobia of being sick, um, is it a, a version of that where I, I became, I would say petrified of acid reflux and I was, was convinced I was having it all the time even though I was and wasn't like it was a very and this is this is another thing is that and I you know I remember saying to the therapist I was like how am I going to be if I have an actual problem like and she was like but you would actually handle it differently you'd probably handle it better because your brain is trying to solve a problem that it, it can't if that makes sense. Um, I was trying to say something, I've gone off on a tangent now. I think the biggest help helper for me was to switch the mindset from, I will have this forever, to, I'm experiencing this today, that's okay, I won't experience it every day, I won't experience it all day today, um, and this is something that I just need to deal with right now, and then, it, you know, it will, it will go away or it'll disappear. I think telling yourself that is, is the way forward. 
I'm trying to think if there was anything else I meant to talk through in this video. It's hard because it is something that it is personal to each person. Um, I'm only trying to share my experience with it and how I've done my best to overcome it. Certainly it hasn't been easy and it was not like overnight, it's taken me a while and, and, and I still experience it. Some, some moments um, it, it appears randomly. Um, oh, that's what I was saying, <laughs> was my dad experienced this for a period, I think he said he was in his 30s when he was working in a job that he found really stressful. <clears throat> he didn't enjoy it really, I think he was under a lot of pressure and he said Monday to Friday he would have this feeling in his throat and or maybe he said he was in his 20s, I can't remember but I know he was still qu quite young and yeah he said that he'd convinced himself he had like something seriously wrong like in his throat he just he didn't know what it was but then what he noticed was when he would go out with his friends at the weekend maybe he'd go to the football have some beers he was like it would disappear and then Monday Monday morning it would come back so he recognized it as a stress response um he didn't really have an answer as to how he got rid of it but well I think he left the job <laughs> but, but um yeah, for him, he was able to identify it was a, it was a stress response, and as I mentioned before, Google will tell you that it is either stress and anxiety or acid reflux. I genuinely believe it is could be a combination of the two, or just stress and anxiety. I don't know to what degree would acid reflux on its own cause it, but then stomach issues in general go hand in hand with this type of thing as. The gastroenterologist told me they are all very connected. Um, another thing you could look into is the vagus nerve and, and ways of stimulating the vagus nerve which is the nerve, now I'm not 100% on the info here, it connects, it's from the brain to the stomach and it sends messages but if you do things to positively impact the nerve it can help soothe your stomach so I believe things like singing, um, which I've already mentioned, also gargling, I believe, like even just with some water, can help stimulate the vagus nerve. And also, this is uh, an interesting one, not the easiest, done jumping in, well, not you don't need to jump, but <laughs> going into like a plunge pool, like cold, cold water, which Jack loves to do. I haven't done that. So alternatively, just placing something cold against your chest um, can reset and just help I guess it's it's just I maybe it's a distraction technique I'm not sure but yeah that's something that I have tried is placing ice or something cold on your chest and it can definitely help just bring things down a little level I feel like there was more I wanted to say in this video but I'm aware that I have rabbited on a bit now I'm just gonna reiterate what I said at the beginning please 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 be gentle with yourself, know that you will find relief from this. It's not easy, it does take some work, but you will feel free from it, I promise, because I I was, like every day, I was tormented. Sorry about that. <laughs> it literally happens every single time. So sorry about that. Um, so what I really was trying to say is please, please, please do not give up in thinking that you can find relief from this. It is possible, I've done it, and every day I was tormented by this feeling and I was miserable, I was utterly miserable. It took a while, it's, you know, it's not easy, but um, I truly believe it can be done and yeah, just please know you're not alone either. If you want to, please leave a comment, send me a message, I'm more than happy to chat about this. If you want a further video on this, on more about the, the stomach issues I had because I mean last year was the year of the stomach for me. From someone who had never really had a stomach issue before, I had like two separate issues. Um, you, you know this is something I, I don't think I have talked about on here that much was I developed after that whole issue, once I finally kind of was coming out of that, I then developed this gluten sensitivity which I, I have no idea how connected they all were, I believe they probably were. But anyway, um, yes, please, please, please be kind to yourself. Lots of self-care, you know, little things you can do, they will make a wee difference. You know, for me, what I'm loving at the minute is having a hot shower. That is really, it's just 
stunning for me. <laughs> like, I guess because we don't have a bath, I feel like I'm like, I might have another shower. <laughs> hot showers, hot baths, reading a nice book, co cozying up with a cup of tea, walks in the fresh air, chatting with friends, watching videos or content that is soothing so, or maybe doing like meditations that's something that definitely very helpful if you're struggling to sleep i'll recommend a sleep app in the description box um it's it's a sort of hypnotherapy tape i don't want people to be sort of like whoa like shocked if they happen to have a look at it but it really it's i find it really helpful if i'm struggling to sleep it just puts your mind at ease and actually helps you fall into like a deep sleep and you feel so rested when you wake up in the morning. Anyway, <clears throat> thank you so much for watching this video. Leave me any comments, any feedback. If this was just a whole lot of rambling, I will refilm and do it again because I genuinely feel passionate about this subject and I want to help because I was tormented with it. Yeah, take care of yourselves and I will see you all very soon for another Monday Mindfulness. Okay, bye.